Put my thumb up against the line, bring the saw over to the line, and I'm pinching it with my thumb, pushing it. Then draw back, letting the saw rub against my thumb. And making sure I stay on the inside of the line. Same thing here. Cut the kerf on that side, kerf on this side, now I just connect the dots. All the way down the lines, we're good to go. Now I just do some rough cuts in the middle break out the extra stuff, make it a little easier to remove. Yeah, 
These 4x4s are Douglas fir. It's a little harder than that treated 4x6. The sauce still cuts it well. But it's a lot more dense. Walk through that 4x6 like Swiss cheese compared to this stuff. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six cuts in the time it would have taken me to get the extension cord out. It's a little bit more work, but it's kind of fun being able to do that with your own hands. Now I'm going to use power tools on this bench. Uh, this many boards and this big a thing to work on. I'm not going to have enough time between now and Saturday. It's Thursday to be able to have all this stuff roughed out and cut and assembled in time for Ryan to get his present on Saturday. But I got one set of legs cut. I have the main part of the bench top glued together. I'm going to glue the other part of it together tonight so that it can be set up and ready to run through the planer tomorrow. Then we get started on building the vise into the leg. So, whew.
This is a great chisel. It's a Witherby. Eh, I don't know if that name means anything to you, but a uh, guy named Witherby made chisels. And when he made them, he laminated a piece of hard steel into the back. You can see the line between the soft steel and the hard steel right there. Hard steel, soft steel. Makes a difference in the sound, doesn't it? Also, this hard steel polishes right up and holds an edge. Still razor sharp, and I, I sharpened that two years ago. Now, if I wanted to, I could do paring cuts because this chisel will do them. Man, that's a lot of work. This kiln dried stuff is just a bear to work with. Put about a 25 degree taper on that because I don't do a lot of timber framing. This is the heaviest work that I've done with this chisel. Heavier work, you'd want to go with a 30. You can go 25 and then 30 out on the edge. It makes the, the edge a little stronger. But I'm not beating on it that hard. This is a, a dead blow hammer. It's filled with lead shot like a maraca. So when you hit, it doesn't bounce. The mallet hits and then the shot hits right after it. So all the power of the hit, of the hit goes right into the handle, but it's not that shock. Bang! Also, this chisel was designed and made to be hit with a hammer. Well, not a hammer, with a mallet. This schlag ring, or butt ring, schlag is butt in German. That's my understanding anyways, I could be wrong. That schlag ring keeps the tail end of the handle from splitting out. You can see it's got a little crack started there and the schlag ring is actually getting driven into the handle. And that happened long before I got it. But it also stops this from spreading out. You can see that the metal ring is actually swelling up a little bit where the hammer blows are driving the wood and mushrooming the wood out, and jacking the end of that tube open just a little bit, but it's plenty solid. And you can see, it'll shave. I'm just not wanting to spend that much time on it. If I was trying to be fine furniture, I probably would be doing this with a plane. But I'm not. I'm having fun with my chisels. This one is just as sharp. But it's designed to be beaten on. It's a it's a rough work chisel. This is a carpenter's chisel. Use this to set door frames, you know, cut out the notches for the latch. But you polish up the back till it's like a mirror. You give it a good edge on the bevel. This thing cuts really well. It's a Stanley. It's a newer Stanley, but it's a good Stanley. That steel's solid in there. It's not made out of the laminated steel. Nowadays we can make steel so well and so easy rather than having to fuss around with laminating these two pieces of steel together. They just take a piece of O1 and form it out, grind it down, heat treat it. There you have it. Good chisel. Tough. like a good joint. I'm going to make this piece 
22 inches. That way I had a little overhang in the back. Got a board and a half. Front edge is going to be absolutely flush because of the leg having to fit tightly against the vise. But I'm going to leave a little overhang in the back. This is a Diston D8 handsaw. Very nice one. About 100 years old, give or take. It's eight points per inch. This is a Diston product. It's a Keystone. It's called an Airmaster, made by Diston USA. Don't know if you can see that in the light, but it's kind of a cool thing. This is a 10 point per inch. It cuts quite well, but it cuts a little finer than what the 8 point does. I'm making a workbench. Eight point That's pretty quickly. Nice square cut. This is cut, it's sharpened with alternately beveled teeth that cut like little knives. Take my first cut down the line. The top one, I'm making sure I follow the line. Once I've gotten to this point, the width of the blade makes it so it's very difficult for the blade to kink. You actually have to try and warp the blade to make it cut crooked. So it's all about setting up the line straight first. And off it comes. Following those little tricks, square to the square, square to the square, and it cuts fast too. Fast and easy. Whole thing doesn't weigh but a pound or two. But I just have to set up for gluing some two by fours together. Uh, that's nice and straight. No twist to it at all. That'll go through the planer like. Nobody's business. We'll have a fine piece of wood out of it. Time to go check the stakes. Old Smealock here again. Thanks for watching. Have you subscribed yet? If you enjoyed the video, please take a moment and click the thumbs up.